Hey, what's up? Ian here, and today let's talk about this Hydesys ST2 Pro. It's a single dynamic driver REM is now available on Kickstarter starting on the 19th of December. And the super early bird price for this is $39 for the first 500 units. And it comes with this very nice cable. Uh, and uh, after which, it price will go up to $49 for, for early bird. And uh, I'm not too sure what's the actual retail price, but it's definitely going to be higher than this. Uh, and on top of that, the cable can be sold separately at $36. And this is a USB-C uh, cable, right? It's not 3.5, it's a USB-C. And uh, it's got a very nice DAC chip in it. So it's $36 for that. Uh, as you can see, I've already opened it. I've listened to it. I've measured it. And uh, I've compared it. Uh, and I'm here to share with you guys my thoughts and opinions about this IEM so that you guys can make an informed decision when you head over to the uh, Kickstarter side, uh, of which I will leave links down in the description below in this uh, video. Okay, so let's first start off with the packaging, um, accessories, and uh, the specs as well. So this is the uh, box that comes in. At the back, there's some specs, so let me just read it out to you. Uh, for the IEM, it's got a frequency range of 20 to 40,000 hertz. Uh, sensitivity is 108, and impedance is 32 ohms. Now, as for the DAC chip, which is on this cable itself, it is the ES9281AC Pro, uh, and it can decode DSD up to 128. Uh, PCM, it can support up to 384 kilohertz at 32 ohms, and this can support MQA. All right, uh, that's for the specs. Now let's go through accessories. Uh, you get this pouch here. Yeah, this is a snapshot pouch, pouch, it's coin pouch. And then you get this adapter, which is a USB-C to USB-A adapter for those of you who are still working with um, older PCs. Uh, and then you get three sets of ear tips, all right? Three sets of stock ear tips. And of course, a QC guide or whatever. Uh, and this uh, Velcro strap for the cable. Now, let's talk about the cable. So, as I mentioned, this is a USB-C cable. So, you can it literally connect to any device. It supports Android OS, iOS, uh, I, uh, Mac OS, uh, PC, Windows, uh, anything, right? You can, as long as you've got a USB-C port, you can connect this uh, to the device and you can listen to your audio, okay? So, it's a braided cable. It's a two-core cable. Uh, it's got a Y split somewhere here. All right, and it splits out to the uh, IEM. And on one side, which is the right side, it's got a microphone uh, and a play pause button. So you can essentially make phone calls with this IEM, with this cable, and also uh, go on uh, Zoom calls or go live if you want to, uh, and play games with this cable as well. So very uh, versatile cable. And then it comes up to this uh, hook here. This hook here is very nice and soft. Uh, yeah, it's not flimsy, but it's nice and soft, okay? And most important part of this cable is that it comes with a detachable uh, two-pin connection, meaning you can connect this uh, cable to any IEM, any IEM that has got two-pin, right? So you can change out uh, your IEM for the stock IEM, and then you can listen to your favorite music, play your games uh, with the favorite IEM uh, that you choose, okay? All right, so now let's talk about the IEM. The, this IEM is a pretty budget IEM, I would say. Uh, the faceplate is kind of generic with the Hydesys logo on it. Uh, the shell um, is, this is black. It comes in two colors, by the way, black or white. Uh, and the shell is like a smoke finish. I think it's made of resin, I'm not too sure. Uh, and then the nozzle is like inserted into the uh, shell itself. And you can see the, the driver, the dynamic driver that is inserted here somewhere near the nozzle. So a pretty generic, uh, you know, IEM. Um, not not the very high-end, doesn't look very high-end, but it's all right, it, it works. It's a budget IEM, okay? Uh, next, let's talk about the, well, fit and comfort for this. I, I feel that it's all right. It doesn't really fit my ear, uh, but then again, it doesn't give me any, any discomfort. So it's kind of all right. It's just that I need to adjust the, uh, the fit. Uh, every now and then, you know, because I lose my seal because it doesn't go all the way in. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's not uncomfortable to wear, uh, but it doesn't really fit well, okay, in my ears. Okay, now let's talk about the uh, technical performance for this. And I would say because this earphone uh, is a pretty budget earphone, I feel, and uh, it's all right in terms of technicalities. Uh, 
the price, uh, let me just repeat the price, it's $49 for the entire package and uh, you can buy this separately in terms of the cable at $36. So this IEM is, you know, a few dollars more. So it, it's kind of a, a budget IEM. So back to technicalities, uh, the resolution for this IEM is all right, right? It, it matches the price that they're asking for for this IEM. Uh, it's not exceptional and it's not bad as well, right? So it's a pretty standard average resolution. Soundstage is also pretty average. Uh, it's got width to it, uh, not much of a height, and the sound separation is all right. It's not very separated. Sound isolation is okay, it's good. Uh, and the detail retrieved on this is subpar, I would say, uh, well, because that's for the tuning. Uh, basically, I would say, technical performance of this is average, okay? Now, the tone and timbre for this. Tone and timbre for this is warm, is fun, uh, is casual, and uh, overall, it's more for, I would say, the general public, you know, to listen to music, and, uh, and also for everyday use as well. You can play games, uh, watch movies, well, oh, movies, like explosions and all that, and game as well is very immersive, okay? So, yeah, I, I would say the tone and timbre for this is, it appeals more to the general public. It's more fun sounding, yeah. Uh, now, in terms of the sound signature, uh, let's move this one side and I'll post my graph somewhere up here. So, looking at the graphs, uh, this is a slight V-shaped tuned uh, IEM. In fact, very V-shaped. Uh, it's mostly elevated starting uh, on the mids itself. The lower mids is also elevated. And uh, the bass itself is, uh, I would say, a very impactful bass, a prominent bass, but uh, in terms of the roll-off, is it's not really extended in terms of the sub-bass, pretty controlled in that manner. And the note weight of it is also a little bit on the lighter side. Uh, so in a way, it's kind of bloated in the mid-bass where all the impact and the, you know, the punch is. Okay, So for sub-bass, I wouldn't say this uh, is a very solid uh, kind of sub bass. It rolls off uh, and it's controlled, kind of a little bit light in terms of the sub bass. So uh, for those bass heads who really love your deep, uh, you know, subwoofer bass kind of sound, uh, this might not deliver that kind of sub bass, okay? Uh, for mid bass is elevated, is bloated. It, to me, this is more of a kind of a bass head kind of, um, uh, mid bass. So, for those of you who love to listen to EDM with that kind of punch and impact, with that kind of vibration and dynamic response uh, in your head, uh, then this is actually a very good tuning for that. But for me, it is too overwhelming, and sometimes uh, my mid um, instruments, vocals, they drown out in this uh, mid bass. And it's kind of slow as well, kind of muddy type of uh, mid bass. But some people love this type of mid bass, right? Now, let's move on to the mids. Mids, uh, I would say recessed. So, so some instruments, they sound uh, a bit drowned out by the bass. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's not really clear, but uh, I would say instruments wise, it's all right. Uh, it's not for classical listening. Uh, you can listen to most um, genres on this, but it's just that it's gonna be drowned out by the, your mid bass especially. Uh, vocals, especially female vocals, they sound a little bit laid back, but they sound a bit bright as well. So uh, there's some pros and cons to it. I would say it's supported by the, the mid-bass punch and the mid-bass support for female vocals. They sound a bit more forward in that sense, okay? Uh, male vocals, they sound pretty good on this and overall a very low-end presence uh, for the uh, male vocals. Okay, now let's talk about the gain uh, to the pina, uh, to the treble as well. This is a pretty bright uh, and intense, I would say. I wouldn't say very intense, I would say just nice. Uh, gives that transition to the, tr the treble a, a, a more uh, bright kind of uh, transition and it's, it's more forward as well. So uh, in terms of the transition, uh, uh, and the overall um, spiciness of it is all right. It's not too spicy. It's not too shouty as well. Uh, and it's not uh, intolerable. It's tolerable type of transition. And overall, uh, I find it's pretty good for me. 
I, I like it. Okay. Now, next is the treble. So treble is kind of bright uh, overall, and I would say the, uh, in transiting from the upper mids to uh, the treble is actually more of an equal uh, type of transition. You, you, you don't actually feel that there's a sudden drop of the treble and it becomes smooth and it becomes like dull. Uh, this one is actually pretty all right. Uh, and you know what they did uh, for the uh, so-called sibilants? They purposely dipped it in, dipped it down so that you won't hear any harshness or any sibilance uh, for the treble. It's energetic, right? So it's so you get a few things for the, for the treble. So it's an uh, energetic treble. Uh, it sparkles a little bit. It's not too harsh as well. And the overall extension of the, uh, the treble is actually very good. Uh, it's not very fatiguing, though for some who are sensitive to treble, uh, you might find this a little uh, fatiguing. All right, so that's the sound signature for this. I would say this IEM is suitable for EDM, uh, pop songs, R&B, uh, most of the mainstream uh, genre of music, uh, yeah, this is this I am is suitable for that. Uh, classical jazz um, instrumental, not really. Yeah, um, it doesn't pick up most of the details that I want, uh, and it's just too too heavy and a lower end for me. All right, but uh, for me, I would buy this package for this um, cable itself. Yeah, and I will go for the early bird price of. $39 because this cable itself is $36 and I love this cable. Fantastic cable. Uh, the cable has no comparison, I would say, but for the IEM, I have uh, compared uh, with quite a few IEMs here. Okay, so for example, comparing this with the Blonde BL03, I'm sure this uh, is a very famous IEM. All of you know this Blonde BL03. Now, uh, the BL03 has a thick, warm sound uh, and it, it's a bit more recessed in the treble. So, the SG2 Pro, uh, this offers a better treble extension and it's a bit more airier, uh, but it might feel a little bit less lush uh, or natural for vocals. So uh, comparing to the BL03, uh, if you want more uh, treble clarity and treble brightness, uh, then this is a better option as compared to BL03. Now, comparing this to the 7 Hz Zero, now the 7 Hz Zero is more of a neutral and balanced uh, tuning, uh, especially for the mids. So uh, the ST2 Pro uh, is not as forward in terms of the mids uh, compared to the uh, Zero, but the ST2 Pro has got uh, more bass emphasis and it's more energetic uh, in terms of the treble. So it sounds a bit more fun, a bit less accurate as compared to the 7 Hz Zero. Now, in terms of the KZs, all right, uh, I'm sure a lot of you are using KZs. Let's say for the KZ ESX. Now, the ESX leans more towards a bass heavy type of sound uh, with less focus on the treble and the details. Now, this ST2 Pro is a, is a better option in terms of the resolution uh, and clarity and the overall balance of the sound. So, if you want more treble, uh, I would say the ST2 Pro would be a, a better option. Okay, and for example, the KZ Caster. I'm sure you guys uh, are familiar with the KZ Caster. Now, this is also a more of a bassy IEM, and it's sacrificed mainly on the on the mids. Uh, so, if you want a better uh, overall tuning uh, and a more versatile sound, then uh, you should choose the um, ST2 Pro. Okay, so I've listened to a few, not many, but I've compared it uh, with this ST2 Pro. Okay. Uh, and that concludes my overall comparison with some other IEM and also concludes my overall review of this Hydesis ST2 Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys have a great day ahead and I'll see you again in my next video. Cheers.